So I, I have a, I have a beef. I have an axe to grind. <laughs> All right. Are you okay with that? Yeah. Don't mind me while I eat pizza. <laughs> no. Um. And if I've, if I've told you this story, stop me. So there is a brewery near our office. Okay. And they started up, I don't know, let's say four or five years ago. And when they first started, you know, they're, as with many breweries, when they first start, it was just okay. Okay. The beer was just okay. What? But our company office or the yeah. client office? Our no, company office. our company. But I was like, well, you know, give them a couple of years. They'll get everything figured out. Well, last year, I decided I'm going to go back, give them another shot, see what's up. So I go in there and meet there with my brother. And we're kind of looking over the beers that they've got. They've got like a, you know, a, a menu, <clears throat> physical menu. So I'm looking at it and glancing at it. And I'm like, okay, a couple of these sound pretty good. And they've got this one, I can't even remember what it was, but it was like, it sounded really interesting. And, but it had like a weird, like disclaimer by it. It was something like, uh, memorial beer or something and I was and so I go up to the to the bar right because they don't they, they're not they don't have wait staff you go up there and there's this big guy big beard and yeah, I don't know he's probably 35 40 I'm guessing and I ask him hey what's up with this beer and he basically you know, scowls at me and says, that's that's not on the menu anymore. Or we don't have that on tap anymore. And I'm like, oh, okay. You know, I, I wasn't sure what this meant. And apparently what it is, is it, it they have it on the menu in memoriam of some guy who has passed away, I believe. Okay, I get that. But it, but it didn't really state that. But that's totally cool. Okay. So... You know, we order a couple of these other beers and for whatever reason, the guy is just grumpy as all get out. Like to the point where it's off putting. But we have the beer and, you know, half hour later, or whatever, we order another one and he's still like the same kind of the same attitude. And I'm like, boy, this is really weird. And anyway, we we finish up, we leave and I'm like, you know, Maybe the guy was just having a bad day. So I went back there again because I really liked their beers. I was like, they've got some really good beers now. So I went back like, I don't know, a couple weeks later with some of our other former colleagues, if you remember them, the squad, the beer squad. <laughs> and same guy is there, tending bar, and he's kind of the same way. Like us walking up and ordering something was like the last thing he wanted to do. Like this was somehow preventing him from ending his shift in five hours or whatever. Right. It was, it was super weird. So anyway, same kind of thing, same vibe all night. We have a couple of beers. It's just the same vibe. And I'm like, this is weird. Well, a few weeks pass and I go back there one time to pick up some crawlers. And their website isn't really clear about <clears throat> what they have, what you can get. And so I go in there and I want this one particular beer that they had, a blueberry stout. It was excellent. And I'm like, I don't know, do you have the, you know, what do you have on in Crowlers? I'm really looking for this blueberry stout. And the guy's like, yeah, we don't have any of those filled right now. And I'm like, well, what do you have? And he's like, well, what do you want? And I'm like, Okay, well, he doesn't doesn't have the blueberry stout, so you know, how about these other ones? And he's he's like he's giving me this hard time for coming in and ordering this stuff that they sell. Anyway, this other guy from behind the bars, like you know, I'll help you. Hold on. He's like, what do you want? And he 
And he basically goes over and he's filling them manually and then sealing them. So right. they could have given me anything. Right. I'm, and I'm like, what the heck? <laughs> anyway, I'm really kind of annoyed. Like I almost like walked out, but I was like, no, this other guy's being really helpful. So I get my beers. I leave. And months pass, and I'm still kind of stewing about it. Like, it has left a really bad taste in my mouth, right? Yep. And I end up at a work event that we had at the office, and I'm talking to this guy, David. Uh, I'll call him David because that's his name. (laughs) And uh, we're kind of talking about beer. I'd never met David before, but we're talking, and we're talking about beer, and I'm like, hey, have you ever been to this brewery right over here? And he gets this look on his face and he goes, yeah, my wife and I went in there once. But the guy who was tending bar yeah, <laughs> act like, acted like the last thing he wanted to do was to serve us a beer. And he's like, it just was so weird. I've never wanted to go back. And I'm like, OK, it's not just me. It's not like I'm putting off some evil aura to this guy. Who knows? It's multiple people. So I finally got around to emailing the brewery like, hey, just wanted to know I like your space. It's convenient. I like your beer. Uh, I'm by no means am I like a regular customer, but I would come back more and be more regular, except here's this problem. And I don't feel good. And I've never heard back from them. Because that's the guy that read the email. Well, and it's and it's possible because <laughs> I even put in the email, maybe you're the person and you're going to be reading this <laughs> and it's going to go right into the trash. <laughs> but I'm still kind of annoyed about the whole thing because. I, and Well, and here's the other thing. How can you be turning away customers? Because they're not that busy. Right. I go to other breweries that are like packed or have 20 people, 30, 50. This place, the few times that I've been in there, like eight max. Yeah. I'm like, how can they survive? (laughs) Yeah. Maybe they're busy during lunch or on Friday and there's something that makes up for all of it because of where they're located. I don't know. Because there's another, the other place over there too on the other side at the end of the strip mall there. But just same thing. Like, no, like you, nobody's hardly ever there, but then there are some times where it's completely packed inside and out. Oh. Hmm. I don't know. So... Yeah, it's uh, have a job in customer service, but don't uh, don't make me do it. Uh-huh. <laughs> I don't have a problem. Like, like go, just go find something else, man. Like, get out of the customer service game. Like, <laughs> right, right. Go do anything else. <laughs> Any, you, could, you know, maybe maybe he's playing. You know, wearing multiple hats there. Like, yeah, he's also the head brewer. Who knows, but man, find somebody to come in and <laughs> and take over because you're driving your customers away. Yeah. Yeah. I had a good question. No, of course I forgot it though. Hmm. It's it like the middle of the day. I'm like, oh, I should, I should ask Steve this, and maybe we can have a good discussion about it. I get so. I mean, like, we can just talk about how I hate stand-ups. Let's get into it. <laughs> do you hate them in general, or do you hate them right now? In general, I so and I can't 
I like I don't know what it like it's clearly me that has a thing about some of this stuff right and it could be uh because I've been doing it for too long it could be that um like I'm bored with it and I need something different um but I think like stand-ups and some of these other things it's just like it never changes like it's always the same even when it's not useful it's still the same even when it's not useful or yeah. even when it is useful when it's not useful that so that's like so it's not working it's not useful, but we keep doing it because oh, okay. that's like bad. I think I've told the story about the place that I was at where we had like a 60 person stand up. Like, but it was like there, you know, we got to do the stand up. It's like not with 60 people. Like, no, it takes too long. And so everybody's tuned out for three quarters of it. <laughs> right. Right. I mean, you know, it was <laughs> how long did it take, by the way, for 60 people out of curiosity? It was, a, it was 30 minutes. Okay. Yeah. And we you sat know, in a. We sat in a pit. So there were 60 people that sat in a pit and we would all literally stand up and then just outline the pit walls and just go wow. around the pit. Wow. Dude, you guys that don't live in corporate America, it is wild. That's funny because, you know, the, the original intent of the stand up was to have it be very short because nobody was sitting. You were standing up, right? And but I've seen that in a number of places. There was a place I was at 10, 15 years ago that it was like 30, 45 minutes. And most of it was one person's filibuster. And <laughs> we had a couple of those when we worked together too. not filibuster in a bad way, though, really. I don't know. But yeah, I mean, it's it almost it sometimes devolves into people justifying their jobs. That's when it really gets annoying to me. It's like, just give the update of things that are relevant to everyone else. Like yeah, that. it's I mean, I don't know, maybe it's because I like the intent behind it is it's supposed to be ludicrously short. You're just supposed to talk about what you're going to work on and in case anybody you need help or anybody can help you like right and i'm sure you saw it on like the good teams you know the couple times that you've had that where it's super short and i'm working on this i worked on that like a couple weeks ago let's get together after this and that's it have you ever seen it where you have a good team and somebody tries to torpedo it oh yeah of course everybody hates good teams like they always try and torpedo it what i saw was i saw people wait for the organization to change so they could torpedo it because like the team it was like somewhat it was protected and we're it was interesting because we didn't realize like we were in this bubble and everybody was just waiting like sharks in the freaking ocean for things to change so they could come after us <laughs> Wow. Cuz they people hate people hate when you don't do the thing that they do and you outperform them. <laughs> mhm. Mm yeah. It's weird. I had that yeah. on one of the one of a really good team I was on like 10 years ago and team was great. High functioning delivered on time product owners were super happy the team was happy and then there were three people that were in a position of power that had no like had nothing to do with the team so they had no they weren't involved they couldn't take credit and they just sat there and conspired to torpedo and undermine and discredit the team and they did that in stand-up or just in general uh, no, they did it sort of like, sort of in private, but where others could hear, overhear it. Mm. 
and uh, uh, you know, I was contracting at the time, but a full-time employee would hear them and go, you know, that's wrong. You guys are wrong. You, you don't know what we were doing. And, and they just shut him down and he ended up quitting. He's like, forget it. I'm out. Oh yeah. Yes. That's another, another thing that's irritating when everybody wants to be involved in those meetings and it's like, well, okay. So if we're all there, then I mean, we were at a, you were, you're at the place I was at too, where that was the culture for a little while where it's like, well, everybody has to be in the meeting. And then they're like, I aming each other about to do's from the meeting in the middle of the meeting. And I'm like, why? So then when I first got there, they're like, well, I want to come to all the meetings. And I'm like, no, like you don't need to, if you need to be there, I don't need to be there. Mm -hmm. Like it's that simple. Like both of us don't need to be there. Maybe if you're onboarding or something, but if you're trying to get the same information as me or get information from me, you don't need to be there. I'm wondering if it is, if it, if that, because I've seen that before, is it that if that somebody wants to be present and hear all the information so that they never feel like they're not the expert, like they have, for example, if, if I'm not in the meeting, I have to defer to you about the information you know. And maybe I am not comfortable with that, so I want to be there so that I can verify the information and I can... I, it's I, That's what I think is part of it. That's what I think it is, too. It's, and it's, I, it's control. Yes, it's control, and it goes back to them like validating themselves or why they're there or the work that they do. It's annoying. It's annoying <laughs> AF. <laughs> yes. Yeah. So, and no, this isn't like, it's not a new thing. I think it's like a new thing I've said, but I haven't particularly cared for him for a while. I don't think. So, I don't know. Just lots of things seem to be annoying to me. <laughs> yeah. yeah. You're getting old, curmudgeonly. You're getting to the point where you're like, get out of my yard. Well, so it's like, because I used to, so like I used to, I can't tell. I think it's, what I think it is, is I think it's corporate America trying to like crush everything right and so hi steve <laughs> it's steve that's awesome <laughs> keep that in <laughs> So like I had an instance probably around July of last year um, where I, I did. <laughs> so last year I was on the bench April ish, I think. And so around that time I did a bunch of work and I got for those, I got my SEUs, like these education units that you need to maintain certifications. And I got new certifications and everything. So I'd spent some time in like this and kind of getting back to basics sort of thing. And it was really interesting because like I, I was bored kind of at the place that I'd come out of. And then like, I go to these things and I'm like super into the content and like super into um, the mechanics and, you know, the underlying psychology and theory and stuff. So I'm like, okay, I'm like, okay, I'm like the, it's not like, it's not that I don't like that stuff anymore. Something else is going on in these environments that's making it not cool type deal. And so I think it might just be, I don't know. It feels like there's been a shift kind of in the industry. The thing we do has been around for a while and it's being rejected 
and they're trying to do uh you know kind of the safe stuff like that seems to be pretty popular and that's to me is just a bunch of project managers that wanted to feel sorry project managers it's just project managers who wanted to feel like they were not getting out of a job or something i don't know like <laughs> could be it's i mean when this stuff all came up everybody freaked out project managers freaked out business analysts well where do i fit in i don't i'm not my thing's not on there like i'm not gonna have it's not how this works <laughs> so i don't know i i don't know i i can't tell exactly what it is it might just be that that's why i mean by like corporate america trying to crush it is just like they don't want they don't want it to be good they don't want it to be practiced they being like organizations that put right right processes I, I mean, I, but there are people who are like totally fine with it they're like yeah you know i'm uh, you know are are fine you know and understand the whole team concept and collaborating and getting things done and having uh, positive intent those people get it and but there's a lot of fear fear of the unknown who knows anyway yeah so i think it's time for a change in our industry the way that we work you need to do something different this has been around for a long time would you say it's time for a cool change <laughs> is that a song before your time yeah. yes definitely didn't know okay. that that was didn't had no idea what you were referencing <laughs> okay all right <laughs> shout out to the little river band <laughs> They were probably even, you know, sort of at the, at the, I was kind of catching the tail end of them a little bit during their heyday. So it's probably even a little old for me, but those in the, those, the, the many elderly people in our subscriber <laughs> list will get a big kick out of that one. <laughs> you know who you are. <laughs> mm hmm, mm -hmm. Did you go through that? Um, I'm because so you've been what in the industry for twenty five years or so. Um, I wish it was only twenty five. <laughs> <laughs> so, like halfway through or partway through, like, did you have that too, where you're just like, I'm done with this? Um, there were there were times where I was like, this is. It, it's this never ending bicycle of of driving around the same stuff it, it's this big cycle you know similar to how we, we uh, I, I will use this analogy how the in in networking it was the it was the land versus the WAN, then bringing it back together it was this constant cycle of back and forth of of localized versus widespread um and then the constant cycle of whatever the latest you know operating system or uh the latest version version of sql server or whatever and it was it just felt um it felt like we weren't trying to build great products it felt like we were just trying to push the latest thing so we could uh, make people buy the latest thing yeah and that was disenchanting to me so yes there were times where i was like god do i want to get out of this and just you know you know do carpentry or whatever um yeah in the end i, I think i decided that every industry has its own nonsense and yeah that i so like i can't tell because i i i think i see a pattern that when i get bored i move on to other stuff right and this has been the longest that i've been doing a thing and i don't really see like new 
like new skills necessarily like not within the same like discipline like gaining anything new right so then i think we talked about this you <laughs> you have to come to terms with uh the fact that you're a master and it's super easy and maybe you don't love it anymore and that everybody else who's only been doing it for like a year thinks they know what they're doing and then criticize <laughs> the experts about the way they're doing it because they have so much experience. I talked, I think I've talked about this before. Like you're so far ahead that you look like you're behind to the people that are just starting out. <laughs> well, you got to do it this way. I did that like two decades ago. I don't right. like, this is right. why I don't do that. Do I have to explain everything to you? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, I get that. Yep. That's like disassociating from work or something. Um, yeah. So yeah, and that's why I'm trying to figure out. I just keep going and work's work and, you know, have hobbies or something. So mm -hmm. as we'll see, 75 hard, making big changes. So the 75 hard, we're going to take a break. I'm going to take a break from the podcast. I'm not going to do it at all. Really? Yeah. I'm, it's actually no social. I'm going to do no social media at all for that as well. So when so is 75? Well, so the plan is to start April, April 1st. I might actually bump it up to like a couple weeks from now. Um, and we'll see what we'll see what happens. So, okay, yeah, <laughs> just making like big change, like doing things completely different, and that shouldn't be a surprise because I think last year when we came back from vacation, I said I just wanted to leave <laughs> and move somewhere else where everything was new. <laughs> just leave. Right. everybody set my family behind. <laughs> move to a tropical island that uh, it's easy to explore the whole thing in a few days. <laughs> simplify. Yeah. I do like the idea of simplification. So. Yeah. Yeah, so that's kind of what this is about. Is just seeing. And I can't tell. You tell me your thoughts on this. So, I think before we do the break, like... I want to sh I want to show you my hobby, right? I am not sure if it would be better to show you at the beginning of an episode and then we can talk about it for a little bit cuz I'll probably nerd out on it like right away. Or okay. it seems like it would be hilarious to me to show you at the very end and then go on break. <laughs> now you're stuck. <laughs> Not having any questions answered. <laughs> a cliffhanger. You want to end on a cliffhanger? <laughs> yeah, I can see that. <laughs> However, you want to do it. That would be kind of amusing. Because I'm excited. I am. I'm fairly certain that I'm fairly certain you're gonna love this. Okay. <laughs> it's gonna be. I'm excited. Jess will not. I don't think Jess will care at all. Is it bagpipes, bagpipes, revolution <laughs> no. on like the Nintendo switch <laughs> and you've got virtual bagpipes? No, no, I don't think there's a bagpipe game. I am th there's see, look at that. There's a market for that. Emerge, we about, need an episode on emerging markets. Like there's just about every other sim game though. So like there's an auto shop. There's a gas station simulator where you buy like an old gas station. There's a uh, auto repair shop simulator. There's a farming simulator, lawn mowing simulator, which I saw the funniest meme. It was the streamer who was like Mexican and he's like He's like, you don't have to be like everybody else. I'm going to do something different. And he puts on his headset to stream and he streams lawn mowing simulator. <laughs> that is pretty is good. That's pretty good. That is brilliant. Yeah, <laughs> pretty good. <laughs> I tip my cap to him. 
That is pretty funny. Yeah. <laughs> like PC building simulator. I have that one. That's pretty fun. There's a goat simulator. That is not what it sounds like, though. Do they have a scrum team simulator with stand-ups where you organize those? <laughs> no, I I have thought about like trying to develop something like that. I'm like, this might be like a good educational tool because like people are fairly predictable. So I think this is all stuff that we could build in and capture like most experiences. <laughs> and at different levels, you know, you add in people to the team that are challenging. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, that sounds like a lot of fun. <laughs> I'm not building that. <laughs> that's the thing. Like, that's the thing, man. Is like, who wants to do, who would go play that after work if that's what they do? Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah, I'd like to do that about as much as I'd like to run a simulation of uh, picking up after my dog. <laughs> 